I want to ask for help with one thing, which is that uh, I get stuck uh, I, with anger. Uh, when things, when I have an opinion about the way things should be, and they are different than my opinion, I can quickly, especially um, if somebody I care about, I feel like they're threatened. I go like, I can go into anger. Uh, well, it's logical. We've been saying to you all from the first time that we presented the emotional scale to you that anger certainly is higher on the emotional scale than defeat or despair or grief or fear. And so if something that is happening is making you feel defeated on behalf of someone else, which means it's active in your vibration too, then anger is not a bad step. It's a step in the right direction. And even revenge is a step in the right direction. But the thing about it is, if you don't understand the resistance that is present in anger, so you don't do something about continuing to move up the emotional scale, then you can develop patterns that just hold you there. And the law of attraction, this is the weird thing that makes you all not like the law of attraction. The law of attraction will bring you more things to be angry about. You get angry on a regular basis and fearful things won't show up anymore and guilty things won't show up anymore and blameful things won't show up anymore, but a whole lot of things to be angry about will show up in your experience if that's where you're hovering on a pretty steady basis. And um, I mean, it's just sort of a... Knee-jerk reaction. It's sort of where I, I idle and I'm... I'm I function pretty well with a, a, a base level of anger, which is terrible. I, I totally get that. Well, we don't think it's a base level. We think it's a knee-jerk level. We don't think it's even 70% or even 60%. Your base level is way different from that. But it really sticks out when it is there. So when we say to you, it's really going to help you. When we say to you, you are where you are, you feel how you feel, and how you feel is what you get. Just let that settle in for a little bit. Let it be a stronger awareness. How I feel is how I feel. And I've got good reason to feel like this. I didn't make this up. I've been following this and this and this. I feel this way for a reason. Fine. You could even go so far as to say, and I know I'm right. I'm right about feeling like this. But still, there is a power in the path of most allowance because in your narrower view of what is right and wrong you are still disconnected from your source and that is the problem that's the disempowering problem that's the I don't feel good problem that's the out of balance problem that's the diminishing of well-being problem you can be right by all standards but there's only one standard that you really want to calibrate to and that's who am I really and what do I really know and that is that I would rather, what's on the other end of the stick from anger? There's hate and love, that's easier to define, and there's confusion and clarity. But what is on the better feeling? I, I have a friend of mine who's a pretty spiritually fit guy. And he always talks about this fact that uh, men have this same capacity for creation and destruction. And the more anger or destructive energy you have it's still the other end of that stick is your creative energy your ability to protect and defend and create and help so the anger is about my deprivation of my power and on the other end of it is my acknowledgement of my creative power that's really good and what you're angry about is that you're pinching away who you really are over something that they damn well should stop doing but when you look at it not in terms of right and wrong. You see, your inner being, this is important to get, to remember. Your inner being isn't doing that. Your inner being is looking at the same thing you're looking at and not pinching off from source energy. Your inner being is accepting the right to be how this person wants to be. Your inner being is accepting that diversity is balance, that without it, no one could choose that it all helps focus and so as you get it down to what really matters I'm choosing to calibrate to this person and push against this person rather than calibrate to my inner being who isn't pushing against this person 
And that's where your creativity comes in. If you take one of the people or subject, let's just take government, for example, and maybe you've got a real solid case to push against some aspect of that. If it's possible, and it usually is, if you're looking for easy existing matches, if you can find some benefit of government. Well, it's easy to have an opinion of how they're wrong. You can always, almost always have an opinion, but I think it's more, it would be different for me to have an intention of how I'd like to see government be right. I don't know, I, you lost me there. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I lost myself. That's yeah. because it's a subject that most people are so practiced in pushing against. Government's complicated. I'll give you an example, though, of one of the things that I got angry about. Uh, I was walking my dog in a park off the leash, in a park where hundreds of other dogs are off the leash, and a person with, like, six dogs off leash, they were a professional dog walker, threatened my dog. And I went berserk. I, like, I... I, I Especially in my family, my wife, my kids, if I'm... Let's stay focused on that okay. for just a little bit. So you felt angry because I your, felt that anger come your out. dog felt in jeopardy. Yeah, and, and I wanted to protect it. What were you angry about? That person doing exactly what you were doing? Yes, yeah, see, I, that's where I don't understand why I go to that so quick. And it has something to do with being threatened. And it, I have that same reaction if... Uh, my wife isn't well right now, and if anybody even slights her, and the, I, I just feel this protective. Well, you're hitting thing upon the most important conversation that we could ever have together. When we say to you that self-interest is real, what we mean is you cannot see other than through the eyes of self, and you cannot attract other than from self. And so, when it, in a flawed premise way, appears that someone else can threaten you it's such a departure from what your inner being really knows about the law of attraction there is not a law of assertion there's a law of attraction there is not a law of assertion well Abraham you're making me crazy the dogs were attacking my dogs it looked like law of assertion to me it was not law of assertion it was law of attraction so then if you can just reach a little bit to accept that, then you might begin asking, well, what's in my bag of marbles? Do I actually have a vulnerability that's going on? Esther had such a startling awakening not that long ago when she was visiting with someone that she really, 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 really loves. And this person was being defensive with Esther. And Esther thought, I don't deserve this. I didn't say anything. I don't deserve this defensiveness. But she walked away from it and she thought, the law of attraction is the law of attraction and the bag of marbles is the bag of marbles. And my point of attraction is my point of attraction. And if I'm getting defensiveness, I'm attracting defensiveness. How in the hell am I attracting defensiveness? And once she accepted that she must be because she was getting it, then she thought, oh yeah, I was kind of thinking a little bit of that. I wasn't saying it out loud because I didn't want to pick a fight. But she got the fight even though she didn't say it out loud because it was active in her bag of marbles. And you all are so smart. You sniff out what's going on with each other's marbles. You do. And so you're roaming around in a world where there are so many people that are doing so many things. Most of you, it is logical that you would feel defensive because there's so much going on that you feel you can't control, that you don't know how to control because you haven't really been exercising very much deliberately your control. We want to hear you, but let's just finish this thought out. Let's say that you had that experience with the aggressive dogs. And rather than it feeling like they were asserting into your experience, you accepted that you were attracting while well, you really don't know how, but you want to know. Now that question is active within you. So your inner being will show you when you have vulnerable feeling thoughts. Your vulnerable thoughts will just show up. And when they do, you can stop and say, 
rather than try to figure out the rightness or the wrongness of this what's the path of least resistance of this and as you shore that up a little bit what you begin to notice is that not only do you have fewer if any moments in time where you feel that you were vulnerable but you find yourself just moving through life with such a feeling of assurance and good timing there are robbers all over your streets there are people all over the place getting ready to have a traffic accident there are people stealing things you're walking amongst all kinds of things when Jerry first met us he said Abraham I think there should be an incarceration system where all the burglars go to one island and burgle each other and all the rapers go to one island and rape each other and all the murders go to one island and murder each other and we said those islands already exist they are vibrational islands and he didn't like hearing it and neither did the people like you all that we are telling because it feels like the raper is a different frequency than the one who's being raped but it is not a different frequency when you are insecure that's when you become a bully that's when you try to seek control it's the same vibration and so as these lovely animals show you expose our friend said I didn't think I had any of that going on until it manifested in a bigger way well you might not think you have any of that going on until it manifests in a bigger way but then you have an opportunity to consider hey do I have a sense of vulnerability and is that why I'm such a safeguard is, is that why I've developed this attitude of protection but you can't protect yourself or anyone from your own point of attraction ah oh you just can't the law of attraction will find a way to let what you don't want in when what you don't want is active in your vibration and so on the one hand that feels a little vulnerable for a minute because oh my god want my bag of marbles no telling what's in there I've been carrying it around my whole life but when you start clarifying it and you start feeling better you begin to feel more and more and more in control of what your point of attraction is I have one more question. Yeah. We have no more time, so we'll... Oh, we don't? It's all right. We'll take it quickly. How much is enough? Well, this is a trick question for this reason. <laughs> if you are in alignment with who you are, oh, there's never enough. That's why you are eternal. But a lot of people ask that question, meaning, I put up with all this stuff that I can't bear anymore. When should I just walk away from it? when have I taken enough abuse that I should just not put up with that and we say oh you should give that up immediately the slightest bit of discord from your inner being is enough but you have to come to be sensitive enough to your guidance system to know that a lot of people really believe that there is gain in pain so they're willing to put up with things until they come to the realization because the law of attraction won't yield to them the gain they're looking for in the pain but you have to get good at discerning what real pain is and what real pain is is a disallowing of something that you've asked for if somebody you don't know calls you on the telephone and says hello you don't know me I'm just calling to tell you I will never call you again you would not feel pain and you would not say this is enough it would just be a nothing burger you wouldn't care about it at all you'd say all righty then thanks for letting me know but if someone you care about says I'm not gonna see you or speak to you ever again you would feel the discord of that so what's the point we're making when there is a strong desire the absence of it pinches harder you just have to figure out what your desires are you are an uplifter and when you are not uplifting you feel pain you are a lover and when you are not loving you feel pain and you can justify it in whatever way you want you can give all the reasons that you should not love that or this or that or those but when you are not loving you are depriving yourself of something that you really want that you were born wanting and that every day of your life you showed yourself you wanted it because when you didn't feel love from someone you ask for more and when you don't love when you're not loving you want to be more loving life is helping you sort it all out you just got to figure out how to utilize your guidance system to know which end is up yeah if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next